We're talking all about caffeine and L-theanine. Is this the ultimate nootropic stack? Let's talk about it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Holistic Nootropics Podcast, where we discuss using nootropics, biohacking, and nutrition to help you boost your cognition. My name's Eric, and if you are someone who is interested in learning more about nootropics, nootropic supplements, brain hacking, biohacking, holistic nutrition, then please consider subscribing and heading on over to holisticnootropics.com and downloading a copy of my free supplement buying guide. This is a full guide that will walk you through ingredient by ingredient on how to find the best quality supplements and nootropics. I created this guide because the supplement industry is a $100 billion industry, and that's not because all the supplements that are being sold today are good. In fact, most of them are hot junk sold with all kinds of fillers, preservatives, excipients that really lower the quality of the supplement you're taking. And there are good products out there. You want to know how to find those by avoiding the crap in the stuff that doesn't work. And I put that all in a guide for you that, again, you can get for free over at holisticnootropics.com. Okay, let's jump into today's podcast all about caffeine and L-theanine. So why am I talking about caffeine and L-theanine? I'm talking about this stack because first of all, it is really considered a nootropic stack. It's really considered the most basic nootropic stack you can do. So this is something that is good for really anybody, especially anybody who's already using caffeine. And we know that uh, 90% of Americans consume caffeine at least one or more times a week. So that means that you could do this stack and you can really nootropic your caffeine. You can make your caffeine way more brain friendly. So I understand that a lot of people use caffeine for stimulation reasons, for, for stimulatory reasons, right? Uh, people use caffeine because they need it. Like there's people who have those uh, shirts that say like, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. Uh, you know, you have people who just you can't function without caffeine. You know, you ever walk through the airport and you know, you, you see that long line outside of Starbucks or whatever coffee places in the airport. I mean, people look like zombies. It looks like the walking dead out there. I get that we are, especially in America, we are a culture that is that is like addicted to caffeine. Like we cannot function without caffeine. But you know, there's a lot of us that use caffeine for nootropic reasons. That's why I use it. You know, do I need caffeine to function? No, but I love coffee and I love to drink. You know, more and more of it as I'm getting older. Um, I can function well without it, but I'm finding that I just really love the nootropic benefits of caffeine, especially coffee. And when you pair it with L-theanine, you're turning on other parts of your brain that don't really get there without caffeine. And so you're going to notice things like better focus, better attention. You're going to notice less overstimulation, less jitteriness. That's that's really what L-theanine does. L-theanine is a stress reducer. Um, it has a lot of brain benefits, a lot of calming benefits, but it doesn't make you tired. So let's talk about what, you know, uh, like what L-theanine does in the brain. So L-theanine is an amino acid. It's typically found in tea. Um, th that's really the only place you're going to find it. tea in some mushrooms. It's not made in the body. So you have to get it, um, exogenously, which makes it an essential amino acid. Um, it works by stimulating, or not stimulating, but um, enhancing alpha brain waves. So alpha brain waves are the brain frequency that's associated with dreamlike states, that's associated with meditation. The brain is still active, but it's more relaxed. So you're you're not frantic. You're just kind of more calm, but your your brain is still on. So um, if you've ever taken like a like a meditation class or like a yoga class, or you've done any kind of like meditations online. You know, they tell you that, uh, you know, you want to focus your brain. So you have to be very kind of brain active without being out of control. So that's what, that's what alpha waves do. They're, uh, they're keeping your brain active without making you tired, um, and kind of giving you a little bit more of like that dream like state. So, uh, L-theanine's ability to stimulate or to turn on alpha brain waves are what give it a lot of its nootropic benefits, um, you know, so in combination with caffeine, uh, this can be a very powerful um, combination because caffeine, again, 
makes you a little bit more jittery. It makes your brain kind of a little bit more frantic, a little bit more scattered. And L-theanine kind of grabs everything and laser points it in the direction you want. So this is why it's so good for focus. You know, if you're the type of person who it's like you're you know, you're blasting through coffees or you're blasting through uh, teas just to stay awake to do schoolwork or to do a project or, you know, whatever it is. And you feel like you get a little too jittery. You feel like you start, you know, the ADHD kind of turns on and you're so stimulated, but you can't, you can't keep it all together. You got 30 browser tabs open on your, uh, you know, on your Chrome browser Elthini is going to take that and it's going to laser point it directly to where you want to go. So it's going to take all of that frantic energy and really focus it. That's why it's so potent with caffeine. Now, what does caffeine do in the brain? Caffeine uh, suppresses adenosine. So that's what is, that's the, um, uh, that's the neuromodulator that blocks neural activity, which creates drowsiness. So what caffeine does is it blocks your ability to basically go to sleep. It blocks your uh, brain's main neuromodulator that turns the brain off so you can sleep. So um, caffeine actually has a similar molecular structure to adenosine. That's why it's able to bind to the adenosine receptors, blocking the actual adenosine and increasing neural activity. Adenosine also blocks catecholamine production. So this is your epinephrine, your norepinephrine, your dopamine, basically adrenaline and dopamine. That's what gets blocked from adenosine. So um, caffeine has the has the exact opposite effect. So caffeine turns off adenosine so that now you can actually turn on those catecholamines. So what does L-theanine do in the brain? L-theanine increases alpha brain waves in about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, again, this is what's associated with like a dream-like state. So it's high mental activity, but it's not putting your brain to sleep. It's relaxing, but not tiring. Um, and L-theanine is able to cross the blood-brain barrier. So it does have direct effects in the brain. Um, and it's known for reducing anxiety. It's a potent stress reducer. It can lower blood pressure and enhance sleep quality. The good thing about L-theanine and caffeine combination is that it has actually been studied um, in different randomized control trials in humans. So it's not just like, you know, a bunch of anecdotes on Reddit of people saying, oh, I've tried caffeine and L-theanine and it works great. It's like, no, this has actually been studied. In fact, there was a systematic review that... Um, that reviewed five randomized controlled trials evaluating the combined effects of L-theanine and caffeine, measuring cognition, reaction times, concentrations, along with headaches, tiredness, and alertness. And so each trial used a number of different cognitive tests that both evaluated performance and some actually using fMRI and EEG to see you know, the electrochemical activity in the brain. And what they found was favorable clinical significance in the domains of attention, memory, cognition and hyperactivity. And, um, you know, one of the big things they found is that the combined effects of caffeine and L-theanine were able to favorably um, benefit the brain more than caffeine and L-theanine did in isolation. So that's why, that's really the most powerful effect you get from combining caffeine and L-theanine is that they're much better together than they are in isolation. So if you're someone who uses caffeine, you know, just for, just to turn your brain on, well, you're going to get even more benefits by combining it with L-theanine. And and, you know, likewise, if you're the type of person that's just using L-theanine because you heard it's a nootropic and it can benefit your brain, well, if you throw down some caffeine into that L-theanine, you're going to get way more benefits. Um, you know, the only critique of this review that I'm talking about here is that the sample sizes were a little small. Um, you know, they didn't, uh, they didn't evaluate too, too many people. Each trial it was like, you know, 12 people or nine people or seven people, but still you get the idea. And, you know, one thing I always say, and granted, I know like the, you know, the, the clinical, the, the, the randomized control trial purists, they don't like to hear this, but evidence is evidence. So, you know, if somebody on Reddit says, Hey, I use caffeine and L-theanine, it works great. That's the exact same thing that, you know, somebody in one of these clinical trials is saying as well, you know, hey, this worked great or this didn't work great. Um, I remember this. I don't remember this. Um, you know, I feel like this and I don't feel like this. If you ever read these reviews of people using these things on Reddit or Facebook or whatever, you're getting very similar details. So sometimes, um, you know, 
sometimes you have to take these things, even if they are just a few people, you know, it's not like it's saying, hey, caffeine and L-theanine are going to cure cancer. It's saying, hey, you're going to get the cognitive benefits. And again, if you use it, you probably will because it's very hard. Um, it, 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 it typically works. So the recommended dosages for caffeine and L-theanine together, typically you want to t- uh, take it in like a one to two type ratio. So like a hundred milligrams of caffeine, 200 milligrams of L-theanine, hundred milligrams of caffeine, by the way, that's like a cup of coffee. Um, I think that's like an eight ounce cup of coffee. So uh, I think technically eight ounce cup of coffee, it's like 96 or 95 milligrams of caffeine. Um, and a lot of studies, they'll use like a two to one rate, uh, one to two ratio caffeine to L-theanine, sometimes like a one and a half to two. Um, you know, you'll see like a, like a 200 and uh, or like 150 milligrams of caffeine with 250 milligrams of theanine, something like that. Um, I think that most ways that you're going to find L theanine encapsulated is like 200 milligram doses. I know the L theanine I take it's 200 milligram doses, uh, doses, um, or 200 milligram capsules and a dose is technically 400 milligrams. So it's not hard to, to make this balance work. Um, really the right way to use this, in my opinion, start low and slow increase is needed because you know, you might be sensitive to caffeine. And if you are sensitive to caffeine, L-theanine is not going to eliminate that. You're still going to be sensitive to caffeine. Um, it's just that L-theanine is going to kind of streamline everything a little bit better for you. So um, you want to know your kind of individual tolerance for something like caffeine and then kind of go from there. Um, And then you also kind of want to know how you do with L-theanine because L-theanine works differently for different people, just like most nootropics. So you know, uh, L-theanine might not do anything for you. There's plenty of people out there who take L-theanine and they say it doesn't do anything for them. And there's some people who they, they're very sensitive to it. You know, I know in my experience using L-theanine for me is best in the kind of, uh, later afternoon, because then I know it winds me down. If I use L-theanine too early in the morning, it chills me out a little too much. Even if I use it with caffeine, I like to be kind of overstimulated. I really like to use, um, caffeine along with some other kind of, uh, you know, bigger nootropics, like a nootropic stack, like a mind lab pro or like a racetam or a new or something like that methylene blue, combine it with caffeine. I like to really go there because I'm able, I'm, I'm, I'm very good at focusing myself, but some people can't do that. Some people get a little too stimulated and it's like, um, it's almost like that Adderall effect where you take it, you feel super focused, but not on the right stuff. It doesn't really laser you into the things you want. So, uh, again, bio individuality with all of this. And I should give the heads up with nootropics Not everybody gets the benefit of nootropic. So you can't use nootropic like even caffeine and L-theanine and say, oh, hey, this is going to solve all my problems. You need to make sure that you are also focusing on having a good, clean diet along with a healthy lifestyle, healthy relationships, healthy exercise habits, breathing habits, movement habits, all that stuff, because that's where 80 to 90% of the progress is made. Something like a nootropic is going to get you that last 10 to 20 percent. But I will say something like caffeine and L-theanine combination, uh, the, the stack of L-theanine and caffeine, um, it's a potent one because the caffeine is, is doing a lot of the legwork there. Um, you know, it can make a difference. And like I said, this is a stack that anybody can do. So I would love to know what you think about this nootropic stack, caffeine and L-theanine. Do you have experience combining L-theanine with caffeine? Let me know down in the comments what you think of this. And that's the end, you guys. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Until next time, peace.